Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, we're gonna talk about visual transduction. So with that, let's give it a go. So remember, in the bottom layer of our retina, we have our photoreceptor cells. And the photoreceptor cells are the rods and cones. So rod cells are sensitive to light and dark, and cone cells are sensitive to color. So what we have here is a close-up of a rod cell. This right here is the rod's outer membrane, and this is the free-floating disc that is present inside the rod cell. Now inside the rod cell, you have a specific protein called rhodopsin. Now rhodopsin is the protein that is going to respond to light. So when you have a photon come into the rod cell, the photon will go into rhodopsin and cause a change inside of it. And the change occurs with a molecule that is bound to rhodopsin, and this molecule is called 11-cis-retinal. So 11-cis-retinal is a derivative of vitamin A, and it's going to be the molecule that changes in response to light. So when the photon is absorbed by rhodopsin and it interacts with 11-cis-retinal, it causes this molecule to basically turn and produce all transretinal. So it's this conversion that's going to initiate the signal transduction process. So when you have this conversion take place, it causes a conformational change in rhodopsin, which produces metarhodopsin 2. So metarhodopsin 2 then activates a G protein called transducin. And then transducin is going to activate a number of other proteins, which we'll talk about in a bit. But before we talk about what transducin does, I want to talk about a specific process called bleaching. So bleaching is basically a process that occurs shortly after rhodopsin absorbs a photon. And what happens is, is the all trans retinal dissociates from rhodopsin. And when this occurs, it converts rhodopsin into opsin. Now rhodopsin is colored red, and when all trans retinal leaves rhodopsin, forming opsin, Opsin has a pale yellow color. So after all transretinal leaves the protein, it is converted to retinol, or otherwise known as vitamin A. Vitamin A then translocates to the pigment epithelium and becomes 11-cis-retinol. After this, 11-cis-retinol makes its way back to the outer segment and recombines with the protein opsin. So now let's talk about what transducin does. So transducin is going to interact with a specific protein called phosphodiesterase. And before we talk about phosphodiesterase, I want to talk about what happens to the rod cell when it's in darkness. So when the rod cell is in darkness, you have a specific channel called the CNG channel open. Now the CNG channel, or the cyclic nucleotide gated channels, are going to open in response to cyclic GMP. Now cyclic GMP inside the rod cell is going to be formed by an enzyme that is always on or activated. And this enzyme is called guanylate cyclase. So guanylate cyclase takes GTP and converts it to cyclic GMP. Now cyclic GMP, when it binds to the CNG channel, allows these channels to open, which allows sodium and calcium into the cell. This therefore produces the dark current that is present in, inside the rod cell during darkness. So when the rod cell is in darkness, the dark current is activated, which depolarizes the cell. So what happens when light comes into the rod cell? So when light comes into the rod cell, you have this transducin protein activated, and transducin, remember, activates phosphodiesterase. Phosphodiesterase will convert cyclic GMP into GMP, and therefore it will cause the cyclic GMP levels to decrease inside the rod cell. When cyclic GMP levels decrease, this causes the sum of the CNG channels to close. And when they close, sodium stops entering into the cell. So when phosphodiesterase is activated, it decreases cyclic GMP levels. And when the cyclic GMP levels decrease, this closes some of the CNG channels and decreases the dark current. And when you decrease the dark current, this causes the cell to hyperpolarize and neurotransmitter release decreases. And when neurotransmitter release decreases, this causes a visual signal to be produced. So now what we're going to talk about is an interesting property of the CNG channels. 
So the CNG channels are basically cation non-selective channels. So in other words, they let in a number of different cations. So in addition to sodium, they also allow in calcium. Now calcium is going to act as a negative feedback mechanism. And the reason why is because calcium is actually going to inhibit guanylate cyclase. Therefore, it decreases the amount of cyclic GMP. And it's also going to stimulate phosphodiesterase, where it also acts to decrease the levels of cyclic GMP. Now, this is going to be incredibly important for the cell. So calcium that enters into the cell sets up a negative feedback system. It stimulates phosphodiesterase and inhibits guanylate cyclase. So therefore, when the rod is in the dark, you have the CNG channels being open and it allows sodium and calcium into the cell. When the calcium enters into the cell, the calcium is going to inhibit guanylate cyclase and stimulate phosphodiesterase. And what this does is it basically prevents a runaway increase in cyclic GMP. Therefore, it allows the cell to respond to light when light hits the rod cell. And in the same time, during the light, what you have is the CNG channels start to close. And when the CNG channels start to close, this decreases the amount of calcium. This therefore stimulates guanylate cyclase and inhibits phosphodiesterase, which therefore causes the cyclic GMP levels to build up, and therefore it prevents a runaway decrease in cyclic GMP, which allows the cell to respond to dark. So the calcium acts as a negative feedback system in order to help the cell stay responsive to light and dark. So how is the cascade going to be terminated? So light stimulus is termi terminated when the activated form of each component is inactivated. And the process of termination is going to include basically two mechanisms. The first one we already talked about. So in the presence of light, the CNG channels are mainly closed, which causes a decrease in the calcium levels. And when you have a decrease in the calcium levels, this stimulates guanylate cyclase and inhibits phosphodiesterase. This therefore allows the levels of cyclic GMP to increase, and it therefore facilitates the CNG channels to reopen. The other mechanism is going to occur with rhodopsin kinase. So rhodopsin kinase is a protein that phosphorylates light-activated rhodopsin, and, allow, and it allows it to be recognized by a specific protein called arrestin. So arrestin then binds to the phosphorylated rhodopsin and terminates its ability to activate transducin. So that's it for this video. I hoped it helped you understand the visual transduction pathway, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.